All right, welcome back to another episode of Catching Colorado. Um, we are going to be tying up a really fun pattern today. I'm a huge fan of Tim Flagler. Uh, he has a YouTube channel called Tightline Video, no spaces. And I watch his tying videos from time to time to build inspiration or just kind of like catch on to new patterns. And he has a friend that he's met through fishing named uh, Mr. Uke. And Uke's bug is a pattern that uh, he learned from this guy. And I have been tying it and it actually has been one of the more productive patterns I've ever used. Um, and so I'm going to show you guys how he ties it up. You can also watch his uke bug uh, version on his channel at Tightline Video. But the reason I'm tying it here is he can actually not use UV resin. Um, so this is the version of that fly where you are using UV resin um, as kind of a casing. So basically what I have in here is a jig hook. Um, if you don't know what a jig hook is, they're the ones that have the uh, bit of a bend in them. This particular one is a Gamakatsu J20, and I have this in a size 14. The other thing to note is that the bead on here is a 764 slotted gold bead, and there are two sides to the bead. Tim is very adamant that the squared off side, which is the side we're looking at here, is always facing down. The bead just kind of sets the correct way on the head of the fly. Um, so what we're going to do to get started is we're going to use a rusty brown UTC thread. This is the exact same color that uh, Tim uses and uh, the creator of the fly, Uke, uh, uses. So, or it's very similar at least. So what we're going to do is we are just going to go about halfway down the fly. I'm going to tie that thread on there, cut it off close. And now is where we're going to kind of reposition our bead. So it's going to move a little bit as you're tying. So I'm gonna get that slot, which is right there, and I'm gonna move it to the bottom of the fly. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take size .020 lead thread, and I'm gonna kinda of lift up that bead and slide in that lead thread right behind the head of the bead. And then what I wanna do is do four or five turns and just really get that locked in there. And then what's next is we're gonna just get this lead nice and tight here in a spiral going down the fly here. So I'm just gonna line up the spiral there and we're gonna go about three turns, maybe four turns. I think that's about good right there. And then what I wanna do is kind of advance this thread forward. I'm sort of capturing it. And then once I get one good wrap on it, I'm gonna bring that thread parallel to the hook I'm gonna get a couple wraps over the top, and then as I continue to wrap, I'm just gonna rock that lead forward and back, and it's going to basically build a very tapered um, ramp there. And then you can spin the bobbin counterclockwise, which is gonna then allow you to kind of cover up a lot of this lead here and turn it into a brown bug and not a gray bug. So I'm just going to kind of slowly get some turns in here. There's always a couple parts of this that's pretty hard to get fully coated. But I think after that, we're pretty good there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of continue to build up the fly on the front here. I think Tim does it a little bit different, um, adding kind of taper and carrot shape to the body after but I just like to get it started in terms of the shape that I want. Now that I've got that done, what we are gonna do is we are going to use some very specific uh, feathers. This is called Coq de Leon, um, and they're just very, very thin fibers. Um, and what I'm gonna use is about six of these, and we are gonna build a very thin, very pointy tail. So um, my goal is to grab you know, six of these that have maybe some white tips on them. I want them to be closer to white than to black. Uh, I believe they'll show up just a little bit better if that's the case. So 
we have a nice, you know, pointy uniform tail. So you can barely see that there. It is very, very fine. Um, but we are going to start about right behind the lead and then we're going to take wraps backward until we get just to the end of the flat part of the hook. We're not going to go down the bend. We don't want these things curling under. We kind of just want them shooting straight back off the back of the hook. And then we can take our uh, scissors and grab the excess and we can kind of just snip the excess free there. I'm not worried so much about this extra at the moment. You could come up here if you want and just get your thread over it and start tying it down. Um, but we've got uh, some more wrapping to do. So it's not totally imperative that we get it all done. So we're gonna come back to where we tied in that Coke de Leon and we are going to tie in Ultra UTC Red Wire in small, uh, starting on your side of the hook and then kind of working it to the opposite side keeps it out of the way of your tail. So we want to do the best we can to keep it out of the way of the tail. And now comes the part of kind of shaping and tapering the body. So uh, again, you can spin your bobbin counterclockwise. It'll flatten out that thread. And then you can really start to get the perfect shape. Uh, Tim describes it as a carrot shape. Um, I don't know, it's just, to me, it's a coronamid shape, just a very smooth body that goes thick to thin. And we are gonna have a little bit of a fatter butt on this fly. Because I'm trying not to do anything with this tail, I want that tail to still stay fairly straight. So what I wanna do is I have a uh, rotating vise here. So I'm just going to go underneath with that red wire. And I'm gonna try to get some decent segmentation here. Uh, Tim likes about five wraps. I think that's just about all you can do while keeping the integrity of the brown color, but also ready, adding enough red flash. So after you have rolled your red wire up to the front, you're gonna do a couple securing wraps. Sorry for my hand being in the way there. And then we're gonna grab it close and we're going to helicopter. I find that if you hold the thread down while you helicopter, it seems to work a little bit better. Um, kind of up to you, your choice. And then uh, the last step in the process here is you're gonna take a black marker. And if my black marker actually had some black in it, let me grab a different one here. Okay, so you're gonna take your black marker and you're just gonna color the thread here black. And the reason for this is we want to build like a little black wing casing, um, but we don't want to switch out thread and I don't have any black UV resin. So we are just going to do it with a Sharpie. So now that we've got that colored black, we are set to start our whip finish. So then what we're going to do is kind of take our Whip finish tool here and do a four or five turn. One, two, three, four. It's gonna give us a nice collar on the end there um, of black. And then I actually like to just do, and this is with most of my flies, just like a two or three extra whip finish. Um, also with this fly, I think it gives you a little bit more with that black collar. And then we're gonna just snip it close there. Uh, we could have done a little bit better job of that, but that's okay. We're gonna use resin here, so no worries. So that is the completed tying. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get some UV cure resin and we're gonna stack it up on this fly. I like to go a little thicker with this one um, because we're gonna roll it all around on this fly. So I get it kind of thick on top and then I bring it all the way around to the bottom side as well avoiding the hook eye. And I go about halfway, and then I can kind of grab whatever's left and bring it the other halfway and come back. And the goal for me is just getting a nice, shiny, uniform looking body where the bead and everything kind of touches. And then once I get it to that point, it is all go on UV. I'm gonna tap the UV so that it's not constant. It's like a little bit here and there. And that just makes sure it doesn't dry too quickly 
and just kind of rolling it around in the vise here. So we are very close. And I think at the end here, I just do a little bit for good measure. There we go. So that right there is the completed bug. Absolutely gorgeous pattern. Totally fun to tie. And uh, I think it does particularly well in just about any body of water, but kind of got that root beer look to it. And um, you can tie it in a ton of sizes. This one's a 14, but uh, durable fly, uh, very nice jigging fly. And I think you'll have a lot of success with it. Give it a try. Thanks for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you're interested in more relatable content, you can check out these videos right here. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe down below so you can stay updated on our next adventures.